Welcome to the Word Room. We're going through all the chapters of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, breaking down a summary of the Bible, breaking down what the key takeaways from each chapter are and what they tell us about God. This week we're on Genesis chapter 5, which is the first chapter transitioning out of the Adam and Eve and, and creation story heading into Noah. And this is a genealogy, and if you're interested to see what genealogies can tell us about God, you want to stick around to the end because we're going to talk about it. Let's do it. All right, let's jump right into our summary of Genesis chapter 5. So in this chapter, it gives us a genealogy, as I said, which is basically just a line of uh, descendants from ancestors. So it goes all the way from Adam, Adam to Noah. So it starts with Adam, and Adam has a son, and he has a son, and he has a son. It goes all the way through, all the way down to Noah and his sons, which is a pretty big time span. It's actually a 1,656-year time span. That's a pretty big gap of time, and it's just breaking down Basically, this person had this person, this person had this son, and there's some in dick details mixed in the middle of that, but we're going to break down kind of what we can learn in, out of this chapter. But uh, this passage emphasizes the patriarchs being born, having children, and then dying, which is a very important point because remember with Adam, when he was in the Garden of Eden, they were, they were eating of the Tree of Life. They were good. All of a sudden, sin enters the picture in chapter 3. Chapter 4, we see Cain killing Abel. And now we start seeing that this succession of dying, this death that came by sin, is just progressing. Every generation, every new person, they live, they have children, but then they die. It's a continuing theme throughout the rest of the Bible is this concept of the eternal, which is God, versus our humanity in sin, which brings death. And so um, you see that. And then they died, and then they died over and over throughout the chapter. There's one notable exception to that, and that's Enoch. So Enoch actually didn't die. He was taken by God. The Bible tells us, we'll look exactly why in just a moment, but the Bible tells us he didn't die. He, he was just taken to heaven. Um, one of the two people that we know of in the Bible that never died. Um, and then finally, it says Enoch walked with God, and he was not because God took him. So that, that's what it says about him. He walked with God, and then God took him, and he was not dead. He did not die. So what can we take away from this passage? What can we learn out of a genealogy? Well, first, this chapter makes a distinguishing difference between Adam and Seth. Adam, it talks about when it starts this chapter, was made in the image of God. And it talks about how he was created in God's image, and remember, we learned back in Genesis chapter 1 and 2, the image is the word representative, that, that Adam represented God. But then sin came into the world. And then it says, Seth, in chapter 5, it says, Seth, Adam's son, was made or created in the image of Adam. That it was in Adam's, after his own image, that he uh, had Seth. Now, isn't that interesting that it points that out? Seth reflected his father in the earth and his father was a fallen human who had sinned so from that point on it just throughout the generations humanity is born and begins to reflect their father which is a fallen sinful human being that's the sin nature that gets passed down from human to human throughout the generations we also see that during this uh, passage prior to the flood people lived a lot longer after the flood, that time span shortens drastically. Before the flood, we're talking hundreds of years, with the longest being 969 years. Very long time to live. Uh, people lived a lot longer back then. There's many explanations that people give for this. Um, some see it as just God limiting life after the flood. Some see it as just the, the environment changed after the flood, which affected people's life. Whatever the reason, prior to the flood, people lived longer. After the flood, people lived shorter. Enoch did not die, but uh, was taken by God. Hebrews 11, 5 through 6 gives us some insight into this and says, because of his faith, he pleased God, and that's why God took him. Jude also tells us, the book of Jude in the New Testament tells us that Enoch prophesied. So Enoch heard from God, God would speak, and Enoch would speak the words of God. So God was speaking to Enoch, 
and Enoch was prophesying. It's the first recorded pro- prophet in the Bible that we know of um, in the Bible was Enoch. And that's a very interesting reality. Um, also, it talks about Methuselah in this chapter. Methuselah, which was Noah's grandfather, is the longest living person at 969 years. In history, longest person who ever lived. He died the very year the flood came. So he lived this huge long life. And the year he died, the flood happened. We'll talk about that more in just a moment. Noah is the only one on this list that was not alive at, during some point during Adam's life, whether it be the very end of his life, very whatever it was. It's the very, at some point uh, during Adam's life, uh, everyone was alive except Noah. Noah did not see any of Adam's life. Um, Noah is also the only person left alive when the flood comes. Nobody else uh, in this list is alive when the flood happens. Methuselah was the last one, and he died the year of the flood. So it's very interesting takeaways you can gather out of this chapter. Now, what does this actually tell us about God? It's a genealogy, just gives us a bunch of names. What does that tell us about God? Well, first of all, we see that God is long-suffering. Remember, sin came from Adam at the fall. It wasn't for over a thousand years that God sent the flood and destroyed humanity because of sin. A thousand years, God was patient. Sin was growing. Sin continued to get worse. And God was long-suffering with him. He allowed sin to continue because of his mercy and his grace and his love for humanity and his longing for humanity. So he he was long-suffering, very patient. As a matter of fact, Methuselah lived 969 years. Some claim that he lived that long because it was after he died that the flood came, that he was the last person who had seen the generation of Adam. It's almost like God was just extending the time as long as he could to give people time to repent before he, the flood came. He was very long suffering. Uh, God's also very detailed. He goes through in his word and gives us all these details in this chapter, who the fathers were, who the sons were, this whole genealogy. Why? Because he wants you to know that this is reliable. This is accurate. This is historical, that this is real people. These aren't just stories in a fable, you know, somewhere. These are real people with real lives who really lived. And he wants to give you the details. He's very, very detailed. We also see that God desires to be with us. Remember, we see Enoch and Enoch did not die. God got so excited, was so pleased by Enoch's faith that God just took him because he didn't even want to wait on him to die. He wanted to be with him. God desires to be with you. We also see that God speaks to men. With Enoch, Enoch was a prophet, right? Enoch, God spoke to him and God, Enoch would speak the words of God. So God desires to be involved. He wanted to speak to you. He doesn't just want to be some distant, far off God. Even in their sin, God was speaking to men. And ultimately, God has a plan. Why these people? By the way, over and over in the chapter says, and they had other sons and daughters. Why not give us the details of those? Because God had a plan to bring about a promised seed that we saw in Exodus, or excuse me, in uh, Genesis 3. God had a plan, and he's giving us that plan unfolding. It's this line, this group of people that he was going to bring that promised seed through. So God has a plan. I hope this uh, helps you read this chapter, go through the details. Don't don't get bogged down in the names and think, oh, this is so boring. Realize God is speaking to you even through this about his nature and who he is. I hope you pray, I pray that you have a blessed day. I pray that you read the scripture that God moves in you and uh, speaks to you through this passage. Until next time.